but uh, dr mani has taken an initiative that he is he has developed some seed producing lines so he will be delving more on this particular aspect he is a master of bajra napier napier hybrid uh, to have more insights into this uh, particular uh, aspect he will be also talking about conventional and biotechnological approach so i welcome dr manith uh, to this uh, summer school uh, thank you dr manith for uh, accepting our invitation at a very short notes i know uh, you were very busy earlier few days back you were in srinagar then yesterday only you arrived at jhansi and at a very short notes you accepted our invitation and you will be starting this talk thank you very much uh, dr manith for your uh, kind gesture uh, you can uh, start your presentation sir thank you sir thank you for the introduction it's my pleasure to uh, deliver a lecture in this summer school uh, on recent trends in sustainable livestock and crop production technologies besides climate change uh, the topic of today's lecture is development and characterization of seed producing bajra napier hybrid to conventional and biotechnological approaches uh, first of all uh, to a brief about bajra napier hybrid Uh, Bajra Napier hybrid hybrid was first of all developed in 90s uh, around 1940s uh, by hybridization of pearl millet with napier grass. Napier grass is one of the most productive biomass plants in tropical and subtropical climate, and also an important forage in bioenergy crop. Uh, also, its relative pearl millet grows well on soil with low fertility. Uh, but napier has some anti-nutrition qualities like oxalate content also. Uh, Uh, some anti-nutritional uh, factors like uh, its secretory leaves, presence of pubescence. So, because of this, uh, and, uh, livestock animals uh, doesn't prefer this napier grass. But on the contrary, uh, pearl millet, pearl millet uh, having high palatability. So, uh, Burton et al. in 1944, they uh, firstly uh, cross this napier grass with pearl millet. They use pearl millet as a female parent and napier as a male parent. So this uh, both permits development of interspecific triploid hybrid hybrids by traditional plant. So if we look into the uh, bajra napier hybrid, this bajra is diploid. That is, two uh, one is equal to fourteen, having a a gen uh, uh, genetic combination, uh, genomic combination. It's annual. It's having high biomass quality. It's non-scattering seed nature, resistance to various diseases, and the best part is it is seed propagated. But on the contrary. Uh, perpurum is tetraploid, having a dash a dash and b b genome. Uh, the a genome of bajra and a dash genome of bajra uh, is having close similarity with each other. It is al also fertile, uh, but the, uh, the problem is that this perpurum is uh, uh, it is vestigial propagated. It is perennial, having a aggressive nature. Its uh, resistance to various diseases like rust. So in 1944, these two parents are crossed with each other to form triploid bean hybrid, and the combination uh, becomes A A dash and B. A pairs with A dash chromosome of uh, Napier. So uh, it is uh, it having high bio uh, biomass quality, better nutritional quality than uh, Napier, having rust resistance. But the problem is that this triploid bean hybrid is sterile. So the sterility uh, mainly is uh, due to irregular chromosomal segregation. So it is propagated through vestigial means. Now the problem with uh, with this vestigial means that a uh, lot of labor requirement, lot of space requirement, and also uh, the transportation cost. It was found that the cost of production and cost of transportation uh, are uh, cost of cost. Cost of transportation is almost equal with cost of production, so this hybrid doesn't spread through uh, upon its expectation. So therefore, an economical and reliable establishment technique uh, have to be developed. And for this, uh, one of the probable solution may be the fertile variants of BN hybrid. So we are working on this uh, on development of this fertile variants from last seven years. Uh, uh, initially, we have two hypotheses. Hypothesis one is uh, by chromosomal doubling. Uh, We can use uh, anti-mitotic agents like colchicine, triprolin, paracetamol, or uh, and any other anti-mitotic agents treatment for the doubling of chromosome, so that uh, so that the pairing of chromosome will occur. So, this is one hypothesis. 
and the second hypothesis is that uh, to use uh, uh, the another another strategy is that either to double the bajra chromosome. So here we have uh, at IGFRI we have developed tetraploid bajra by chromosomal doubling technique. So now uh, this tetraploid bajra is uh, crossed with tetraploid Napier. So there so there will be no uh, uh, irregular chromosomal pairing. So that chromosomal will uh, there is same ploidy level. So this uh, there may be uh, possibility of development of tetraploid bajra having A A dash A B or A A A dash and B. Uh, chromosomes. So this is the uh, overall review till date. Uh, the first document, uh, man-man hybrid, as I already told that it was developed by Burton in 1941. Uh, so this was later later produced in India in 1949, and this hybrid is more resembled with Napier grass as as double the chromosome of Napier was there in triplet BN hybrid. So this triplet BN hybrid is more acceptable, uh, acceptable as forest plant. Uh, but the only problem with uh, this hybrid is having sterility. So in 1981, this sterility, we, sterility was overcome by doubling the chromosome. Uh, uh, the, there is one group, HANA. This group has already uh, uh, developed double uh, uh, chromosomal doubling te technique for development of hexaploid hybrids. Uh, these hexaploid hybrids, uh, they have uh, either equal growth, equal biomass, or equal characteristic with, with that of triplet hybrid, but some of its clones either have more than the uh, triplet DNA. So there, uh, there is a uh, different response by clones, maybe due to different combinations, dosage effect, uh, gene number controlling character, or gen genotypic of the plant. And further, uh, there is effect of pol uh, polyploidy on uh, dry matter yield and quality component in triplet and 6 xb hybrid. So you can also see that uh, there is almost similar or some better characteristic in there in triplet uh, that in hexaploid DNA. Hybrid. Similar trend with elemental composition like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium. So from this uh, review, it was clear that uh, there is neutral or little negative effect on the increased priority. So uh, further, there are other groups uh, who have uh, used this tissue culture techniques for the development of uh, hexaploid BN hybrids. So it was found that there is high heterosis effect uh, on the range of pollen viability, also uh, large heterosis for panicle size. Uh, in, in 2006, uh, Abru et al. They used chromosomal duplication technique in uh, using tissue culture. And previously, uh, this chromosomal doubling technique or polygenic treatment was given in vivo. But in 2006, uh, later on in 2009 and 15, uh, they used this chromosomal uh, doubling treatments in vitro. So the the uh, advantage of you, uh, going through in vitro technique that you get uh, you will get uh, little change in the uh, geomic constitution of the hybrid. So, so with this background, we have started uh, standardization of tissue culture protocol in BN hybrid. So, this protocol will be used for doubling of uh, chromosomes. So, uh, initially, we have started with different uh, explant sources, maybe tailors, immature inflorescence, immature embryo or protoplast. So, we have started with immature inflorescence. So. Uh, the another uh, point is that this uh, anti mitotic agents that is colchicine they inhibit the spindle formation during uh, during mitosis so uh, during meiosis so there is doubling of chromosomes so initially we have started with four popular uh, varieties uh, of bn hybrids co3 co4 and these igfri 3 and 6 these are our selections from igfri so we have cut this immature influences in 1 to 3 mm size and uh, cultured in different media combinations. Uh, we have uh, used various type of media combination, original MS media, and also modified this MS media with copper sulfate or some thiamine uh, as per the information available with the literature. So we have applied different housing, uh, BAP combination and placed in dark for 30 days. And after 30 days, we have observed uh, callus induction. So 
we got two type of callus that one is organogenic callus and other is embryogenic callus so uh, this embryogenic callus is more advantageous to us because uh, from this embryogenic callus there is uh, very uh, little bit or no chance of variation uh, in the progeny uh, and the progeny will become true to type with the mother plant so we have standardized this vr hybrid tissue culture protocol in vr hybrid in igf pi 3 so we get 100% callus induction also 100% embryogenic callus further in igf pi 3 we initially we get uh, organogenic callus but later on we have modified our uh, hormonal treatments and we get 75% embryogenic callus with uh, 24 dn bap combinations and uh, this is the case with co3 and uh, similarly we get uh, callus induction but no embryogenic callus and with co4 uh, similar is the uh, trend with original ms media we get only 20% induction but with modified copper sulfide media we get 66.6% embryogenic callus induction so uh, this was the study of initial experiment we get embryogenic callus for co4 and igfri3 and uh, and after hormonal combination we get embryogenic calyl igf5 6 also so uh, but the fate of this experiment that we get only fibrous root or fibrous structures rather than shoot so we have uh, we have increased more number of lines uh, due to poor re regeneration response in previous hybrids so we, we have uh, we have added six more lines we have generated some more triplet bn hybrids so we have also modified our strategy we have uh, applied different hormonal combinations and placed them in uh, dark for 30 days and uh, you can see here that uh, different genotype behave differently as far as tissue culture is concerned so there is genotypic effect on the tissue culture so we get uh, we, we get different uh, hormonal treatments for standardization of tissue culture uh, response in different bi so you can see now this is the embryogenic calyx uh, this is i3 i6 uh, and bn5 and bn17 6 so these are our station uh, these are our uh, newly produced hybrids and these are selections of igf so we get embryogenic calyx from these and this is these are organogenic calyx uh, you can see the difference between embryogenic yet you get some uh, these globular type structures so these globular types uh, type structure are embryogenic calyx and here such structures are not there so we have uh, discarded these lines having organogenic calyx and selected only those lines which have these globular type structure so uh, this is bhn6 case so finally uh, out of 10 we have selected only four genotypes which are having good embryogenic potential so now based on this high embryogenic potential we have selected these four lines and further uh, also we have modified uh, our explant initially we have take this large panicle size uh, immature inflorescence but later on we have used this small size explant so so similar strategy we have uh, we have adopted and we have find that uh, after callus induction embryogenic calyx were placed on different uh, induction media one is induction media other is regeneration media is maturation media when we have placed Uh, callus embryogenic callus in directly to regeneration media these fibrous root type structures appears but we have when we have uh, added one maturation step then we have find that uh, we got this uh, shoot from the embryogenic calyx so with this uh, we have standardized successfully standardized in vitro plant regeneration protocol in pn hybrid and uh, the main uh, point of this standardization that choice of explant is size maturation media and low growth hormone uh, concentrations favor the development of plant regeneration protocol in bm hybrid so uh, similarly we have standardized tissue culture uh, protocol in napier also uh, it, uh, two different lines of napier was used n27 and mb4 so you can see these are the somatic embryos this yellowish or whitish type structures these are somatic embryos so these uh, shoot type structure appears from this somatic embryos these are shoots so this is this is with igfri3 this is with nbn7 
we have standardized the tissue culture protocol is with nmb4 is in apr line we have standardized tissue culture protocol in apr line so uh, this is the overall field view of tissue culture restarts and we have also studied genetic fidelity of this uh, tissue culture raised plants and we have found that uh, the plants raised from uh, organogenic calai have some variations but the plants raised from this embryogenic calus these are true to type these are 100% similar to the mother plant so that's why this somatic emergence pathway is always advantageous uh, now we have uh, since we have already standardized somatic emergence pathway so we have selected those lines which have superior tissue culture response ig4 i3 nb15 nb16 and nb3 so three major nepr lines and one nepr line so we have applied different concentrations of colchicine and triprolin colchicine was applied at a concentration of 100 mg 100 to 300, 360 mg range and triprolin was applied at a concentration of 5 micromolar and 10 micromolar uh, this, this this is the information already available in literature and it's it's on bn habit so we have used different combination of this colchicine and triprolin you can see we have placed uh, our embryogenic calus in calus induction media with colchicine and incubate for 24 hour and after 24 hour uh, we have transferred it to calus induction media since we have already standardized the regeneration media so after 30 days uh, we get uh, 80 to 90% uh, regeneration efficiency in this dna uh, and uh, we have found that 100 mg or 120 uh, 125 mg concentration is better for calus induction and under this concentration our calus uh, is is going to survive and with regeneration efficiency of 90 to 95% similar is a trend with the uh, triprolin concentration similarly we have applied triprolin for 24 hours and after 20 for 48 hours and after 48 hour, 48 hour incubation uh, we get embryogenic li so in this situation five micromolar concentration is better so initially we have less regeneration uh, capacity with respect to triprolin later on we have modified our protocol we get 80 to 90% better regeneration regeneration efficiency so this is the protective oxa uh, octaploid nepr so our strategy was to uh, whether uh, whether why not to uh, double the nepr chromosome so that we get some different pairing uh, pairing of chromosome with, with respect to this octaploid nepr so uh, this is protective uh, octaploid plant similar with the nbn7 nbn uh, nbn16 initially uh, our efficiency was 10% but we have improved it to more than 90 to 95% so uh, with this we have finalized uh, our tissue culture protocol also antimatter against treatment so these Uh, plants are under field condition under uh, uh, testing condition so now the second strategy for the development of fertile variant of bn hybrid is by using tetraploid bn hybrid so since this tetraploid bn hybrid is uh, new to the nature it is it is newly produced by uh, by us so we have to check its feasibility whether it is possible with the tetraploid nepr or not as like uh, dipped bajra in is big process so we have uh, first study is feasibility whether it is possible or not so for this uh, for this first we have to we have uh, tetraploid male sterile line uh, uh, as well as tetraploid maintainer line so we have used uh, initially tetraploid male sterile line uh, for crossing with tetraploid nepr lines so this this is the pollen viability uh, you can see that uh, all the pollens are sterile this is the stigma receptivity studies uh, in tetraploid male sterile palmulet and this female is receptive from uh, minus 3 days to 8 up to 8 days uh, so this is the pollen viability study of this selected initially we have selected only three nepr lines uh, to check uh, their feasibility with the tetraploid baja so this n2 n3 and n27 lines are nepr lines so what we have observed that uh, we uh, initially we have attempted uh, thousand of crosses but to our surprise we found that uh, there is a embryo abortion uh, occurs so to study at which state uh, which stage embryo is going to be abort 
we have studied day wise growth status of developing embryos so this is a day one embryo day two day three day four and up to 10 day 10 days the embryo is fine and later on we have find that up to uh, on day 12 there is uh, occurrence of embryo abortion in this developing embryo and later on uh, each embryo is going to be aborted so uh, similar trend we have observed uh, we have studied this up to day 27 and this is the uh, embryos generated after crossing male sterile bajra with n3 line this is different line and in this line we have observed that on day 12 or day 30 this embryo abortion starts and similarly with the this n27 line this is third third napier line and in this line we have observed that up to 13 uh, or up to, up to 14 days embryo is okay so so from this experiment we got some interference uh, that different napier lines behave differently as far as their uh, crossing with napier is concerned so so we have tried more number of napier lines uh, in the crossing program and we have observed that there is limited crossability and uh, now to rescue uh, the embryos uh, for, uh, from abortion we have dissected uh, this uh, the developing embryos at 8 to 10 days uh, from abortion so after 8 to 10 days we have dissected these embryos and placed these embryos in tissue culture media and uh, from this we have uh, uh, developed seven successful tetrapod BN hybrids and this center one is the tetrapod BN hybrid plant type and these are the panicles of uh, parents along with iPad. This first one is the panicle of uh, tetraploid bajra. This last one is the uh, panicle of tetraploid napier and this middle one is the panicle of tetraploid bajra napier hybrid. So uh, our, uh, we have confirmed the ploidy of this uh, hybrid using throw cytometer and we have found that this uh, the ploidy of this uh, this BN hybrid is tetraploid. Also we have uh, uh, visualized the, their chromosome at metaphase stage and we have find that uh, the chromosomes uh, are also tetraploid. So out of seven hybrids, two were not able to survive due to hybrid necrosis and the rest five hybrids, female were found to be fertile while male are still survive. So the sterility is again uh, there. So this sterility may be due to the presence of cytoplasmic male sterility because uh, we have used male sterile line. So, so we have changed our strategy. We have now we have used tetraploid maintainable bajra uh, instead of tetraploid male sterile bajra. Now uh, further we have uh, further to break the sterility of tetraploid uh, BN hybrids. We have crossed this tetraploid BN hybrid with different nature lines in the hope of restoring the fertility. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, our breeding, uh, breeding strategy. We have crossed tetraploid male sterile with different napier lines, tetraploid maintain alive with napier lines. And uh, uh, initially, uh, in initial year, we, have, we are getting only sterile type of BN hybrid. And uh, further, this tetraploid BN hybrid, we get all self type uh, plants because, because there is a need of embryo rescue. So in letters in Karib 2019, we have closed this tetraploid BN, tetraploid uh, tetra male with napier lines and tetraploid maintainer with napier lines. And we found that with tetraploid maintainer uh, napier line, we have uh, got six males and one fertile. So this is the fertile type of plant. This is, this is fertile type. Both male and female are fertile in this case and also this, uh, they, uh, the seed uh, is produced from these lines. So we have studied stigma receptivity of this plant. We have found that uh, the stigma of this plant is receptive from day 0 to day 8. Also pollen viability studies, the pollen is also viable. You can see that uh, pollen, pollen is going to be germ uh, germinated in this slide, also in this slide also. So cytological validation also proves that uh, this, uh, this BN hybrid is tetraploid. We have uh, got some uh, bivalent pairings, a tetravalent pairing. We have also uh, molecularly uh, validated whether this hybrid is tetraploid or not. So we have used different 
uh, uh, SSR markers uh, which are specific for Bajra, which are specific for uh, Bajra Napier hybrid and also for uh, Napier lines. So this red type uh, stars, these type of markers show co-dominant inheritance and this blue color shows parental specific inheritance. So from this molecular validation, cytological validation, we have proved that our hybrid, hybrid is tetraploid. This is novel in nature. This is, uh, we can say that this is world's first tetra, uh, tetraploid BN hybrid, which is seed producing. So uh, we get different size of seeds obtained with varying seed germination percentage. So uh, the size of seed uh, is similar with like, uh, uh, like wheat. So this is the germination of uh, this seed. Further, uh, since we got uh, sterile BN hybrid uh, initially with the male cell line, later on when we have used tetraploid main, uh, maintainer line, uh, then also we get some sterile lines and only one fertile line. So we have studied why this happens. Why uh, with maintainer line sterility is also there. So we have observed that it's not only uh, uh, chromosome, it's not only males, uh, that uh, cytoplasmic male solidity, but it's also the pairing behavior. So uh, due to this pairing behavior, uh, due to the presence of more univalent chromosomes, uh, uh, that this univalent chromosomes causes sterility. So this is the tetraploid uh, B and hybrid plant type. There is a field is of DDG clock signs of TR Sharma recently in November 2021. This is the PMC field visit uh, where Dr. Uh, S.K. Chaturvedi, Dean, or LBCU have visited our field. This is the, uh, this, you can see the plant type up to, uh, 12, to uh, 12 to 14 feet height, having high pillars, high biomass. Now, uh, this is the field visit of Dr. Punjab Singh uh, to our field. So, now, uh, the challenge for us to stabilize this seed producing BN hybrid. Now we are going to uh, stabilize this seed producing BN hybrid using various strategies. We are going to either development of real population or either uh, by using speed breeding, we are going to standardize, uh, we are going to uh, stabilize our uh, line. So yes, at this time, this, uh, this BN, catabolite BN line is in F3. Uh, generation. So soon we are going to stabilize the line, this line. And uh, so at overall, in summary, we can say that embryo SQ technique uh, uh, was standardized and the developing embryos were dissected out aseptically and rescued after 8 to 10 days of pollination and cultured on MS media supplemented with NA and kinetin. So with continuous crossing program along with scaling of large tissue culture nurseries, resulted in development of novel tetraploid seed producing BN hybrid. So this hybrid is able to produce more than 15,000 to 20,000 seeds throughout the year with 80 to 90% seed germination ability. And the hybridity of this uh, hybrid was confirmed by morphological, molecular and cytogenic studies. So this fertile tetraploid BN hybrid reported for the first time globally will be very helpful in easy and cost effective dissemination of this highly potential forage growth to the farmers group. It has the potential to be game changer in biofuel production, grassland rejuvenation programs, besides bridging the gap uh, between this, uh, the production and the supply division. So, uh, this is all about today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Now, if you may have any questions, you may ask. Please ask. Uh, let me turn on the uh, ma'am. Is the microphone on for all the participants? Participants can turn on their microphones and ask questions or send the questions in chat. Any questions? Are oh, you want to interact with sir?
Please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Manit, for a very wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. If the yes, participants uh, are having any queries, they may put them in the chat box or they can directly interact with our speaker.